it's Elle talking about setting up reptile tanks again. Good morning reptilians, welcome, welcome back to my channel. So this video is a video all about bioactive tanks. I'm not going to be building a tank in this, we're just going to be talking about how they work and what they're good for and all that good stuff. This is another one of those videos like last week where I get questions about bioactive setups so much so I just wanted to compile all the information into one video all about bioactive setups. Before we get started, yes my hair is no longer purple. I got tired of it fading out and it was very hard to maintain. So for now we are going back to just brown and this single stripe of green that is just there I guess. <laughs> So first things first, what does bioactive mean? According to bioactiveherps.co.uk, in its basic form, a bioactive setup is any type of enclosure that employs one or more species of invertebrate to clean up waste products. So a bioactive setup is basically a naturalistic setup that you add a cleanup crew to and it cleans up the tank for you and turns all those wastes into fertilization for your plants. And it's just a never ending cycle, just like it would be in the wild. I did a video a little while back about basic setups versus bioactive setups, so if you missed that one, I'll leave a little card there for you. But really quickly, pros to keeping a bioactive setup. Number one, it practically cleans itself. You will have to spot clean urates and the glass and things like that. But for the most part, the whole point of a bioactive setup is that it is a self-cleaning, self-sustaining ecosystem. Just to clarify, this is not saying that you never have to clean out that tank because you will have to after a month or two Basically, as soon as that tank starts to smell weird, you will have to clean it out and give it fresh soil. But yeah, the cleanup is drastically reduced when compared to looking at it and looking at like a bearded dragon that's on tile. You have to clean up every single time it uses the bathroom as opposed to this. And number two, which is the biggest one for me, is that it is very natural. It is a more natural setup for you and for your animal because in a bioactive setup, for the most part, you're going to try to mimic your animal's natural environment. So it just makes it more natural for everyone. So let's talk a little bit about the components of a bioactive setup. I have done many videos on me setting up these bioactive tanks. So to quickly go over it, your bioactive setup is going to start with a well-ventilated tank. A well-ventilated tank is very important because you're gonna have live plants in there and for live plants to grow correctly, they need oxygen. So they're going to need ventilation so the air can circulate in there really good. Stagnant air is not only bad for those plants, but it also can be very bad for your animals. So you wanna make sure that whatever tank you use has a lot of ventilation. Next up, drainage. So you're going to need a drainage layer of some sort on the bottom of that tank. I always use either just pebbles like river rock pebbles or false bottom from joshusfrogs.com and those have worked very well for me. Another very popular thing is hydro balls. I've never actually used them but everyone that used them seems to love them a super super lot. They are basically just little clay balls that absorb moisture and you can also use those plastic crate things. I don't know what they're called. I'll put a picture of it here. You can use that and cut it to the size. I know server design will use that combined with rocks or hydro balls a lot. You can do that. Just some kind of drainage layer because if you don't have a drainage layer, the bottom of your soil is just going to keep collecting water and it's going to become just stagnant standing water. And that harbors lots of mold and it will also kill a lot of plants. A lot of plants don't like standing water at the roots. So you just have to make sure to keep air circulating through that. That soil. Next up, you need some kind of barrier to prevent your soil from going down through those rocks. I always just use weed block or mesh screen and those come from Home Depot. Next up is the substrate. This is the soil that is going to grow your plants. You can use a lot of different things for this. You can use ABG from joshesfrogs.com. I know other places also sell ABG mix but I have not been able to find any around where I live. You can check local nurseries, they might have it. But essentially, I think ABG mix is just like topsoil, charcoal, moss, sand. Anyways, it's just a mixture that has been shown to grow plants very well. You can also use things like bioactive substrates that are made for that. There is an also website called thebiodude.com and he sells substrates made to grow plants. If you are in, I think, anywhere other than the United States, Arcadia sells soils for bioactive 
protective setups. Zoomed also sells something called Repti Soil, which they say will grow plants, or you can just make your own. I have done that twice now and it seems to be working fantastically. I'll leave another link here of me setting up Goliath's tank and you can see the mixture that I used for her soil. And then after that, I put another layer of just straight Eco Earth on top of that just because I don't want to risk my animals ingesting any of that charcoal. And the charcoal is there just because springtails love charcoal and it also keeps your tank smelling fresh. This is the point where I like to put in my hardscaping items like branches and rocks and cork bark, anything like that. And then on top of that, you're gonna put your moss and your leaf litter. Then after that, you're going to put your cleanup crew. And then you have your lighting. Optionally, in bioactive setups, one really cool thing is you can put a background in. With a background, the possibilities are endless. You can literally have plants growing out of the background. Check out Serpa Design. He does an amazing job at all things bioactive. His tanks are beautiful. But now let's go into each of those things in detail. Let's talk about picking plants. Picking plants is a big part of any bioactive setup because this is your decoration and this is a huge part of your animal's enrichment. The big thing with picking the plants for these tanks is that you have to make sure that they're safe. Some plants are toxic to your animals. I know Reptiles Magazine and another website that I can't think of, but I'll leave the link in the description. They have toxic and safe plant lists on their websites and you can kind of go and peek at that. And sometimes plants are actually toxic to your feeder insects and then if your animal turns around and eats that feeder insect, then it can become toxic to your animal. So you just have to be careful and make sure that you are picking appropriate plants for your setup. And you also want to make sure that whatever plants you choose are gonna be okay in the humidity and with the lighting that you have. Some plants such as succulents are gonna be really good in arid bioactive setups like for leopard geckos and bearded dragons, while they wouldn't do so well in a bioactive setup for say a crested gecko and vice versa. So you just wanna make sure that whatever plant you have is going to survive in the conditions that you're putting it in. My go-tos are always joshusfrogs.com or thebiodude.com because they grow their plants for animals so you don't have to worry about it being exposed to pesticides or fertilizers or anything like that. On Josh's Frogs, they actually will go into detail on each plant's web page so that you can see how big that plant's going to get, if they recommend it for crested geckos or whatever. You can also go to local nurseries. With local nurseries, you can ask them what what exactly they're using in their plants if they're using pesticides. Another option is to go to places like Home Depot and Walmart and you can buy plants from them but you have to make sure that you take the necessary steps to make sure that they're safe for your animal. That means you're going to need to take them home and wash them really really good and I like to repot them into whatever soil I'm going to use into the tank. So I take the plant out of the pot and wash the roots off really good. Get all that fertilizer off and wash the leaves off really good and repot it and let it sit in there for a week or two before I put them into the tank just to make sure that they are all clean and pesticide free for the animal. Next up, hardscaping. Where are you gonna get those sticks and branches and decorations for your tank? I get most of mine from my local river, which is awesome because you can get some really cool pieces of driftwood by doing it this way. But the only thing with doing it this way is that you have to make sure to sterilize the pieces. Now, this is a very debated topic. Some people say that you don't need to sterilize it and some people say that you do. I'm definitely on the sterilize everything you get from outside side because I don't want to accidentally introduce any kind of parasites or things like ticks and things like that into my tank. So I sterilize everything. But the way that I do that is by baking, boiling, or soaking them in a bleach solution. To bake it, I bake my driftwood and rocks on a very low temperature, about 200, 250 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 30 minutes to an hour, basically until it gets hot. If you have small enough pieces, the best way is actually to boil it because then you can make sure that it's getting hot enough. And if your pieces are massive, use giant trash cans and use a very watered down bleach solution. What I did was the whole barrel and about a cap full of bleach and I would soak it for 24 hours, dump it, fill it up with water that I put a dechlorinator in, soak it for another 24 hours, dump it, put more water in there with the dechlorinator, soak it for another 24 hours, dump it, and then rinse everything off. And that's how I sterilized my huge pieces of wood. And then for things like cork bark, I always buy them at reptile shows and the animals seem to absolutely love cork bark. And just because it's bioactive doesn't mean you can't use other things in there as well. If you wanna put pre-purchased hides or bird ladders, super cute things like that, feel free to do that as well. But yeah, that is how I add those things to the tank. Now let's move on to 
what kind of animals are best for these tanks? Animals. Almost any animal setup can be made bioactive. Some are going to be much easier than others. Personally, I found the easiest animals to set up bioactively are tropical species. So it's going to be things like crested geckos, garo geckos, halmaharan geckos, so many geckos, morning geckos, day geckos, golden geckos. Geckos are perfect for bioactive setups. Things like chameleons and anoles and Chinese water dragons, all those are perfect for bioactive setups as well. My crocodile skink is on a bioactive setup and it's perfect for her. Amphibians are another great one. Things like frogs and salamanders are going to be great in those setups. I plan on moving my Pac-Man frog to a bioactive setup soon. And I've seen people do beautiful bioactive setups for things like ball pythons and blue tongue skinks and things like that. You can also do arid bioactive setups. So I have had my leopard gecko on a bioactive setup. Up. You can also do bearded dragons. Tyler Ruggie did an awesome video where he set up his bearded dragon bioactively, which was super cool. So you can definitely do it for animals like that as well. Just make sure that you are using the proper substrate because only certain substrates can be used in bioactive setups for dry animals. So like I mentioned previously, the biodo.com is awesome for this. He has lots of arid substrates for bearded dragons, leopard geckos. And if you're in other countries, Arcadia has arid earth mixes, which are for leopard geckos, bearded dragons that people have had awesome success with. You just want to make sure that you get a substrate that is going to be okay to be kept dry because desert species can't be in super wet environments like that. For this next section, we are joined by Sterling because he wanted out, so he gets out when he wants. <laughs> next up, we are going to talk about lighting in a bioactive tank. Not only is lighting important for your animals, but when you go bioactive, it's also going to be important for plant growth. So just like with animal lighting, this is going to be on a cycle, which is super cool because if you have an animal that doesn't necessarily need special lights like crested geckos, this can easily serve as your light that is used just to show a day-night cycle. Exoterra actually makes a light bulb called called the RectiGlow 2.0 that is actually UV and it is supposed to help your plants grow. I've had really good success with this. It's actually what I'm using in my Gargoyle Gecko's tank. The light bulb is going through glass, so she's getting like none of the UV benefits from this, but it's doing a wonderful job at growing my plants. You also have any kind of very high output LED lights that will work, which is what I'm using in my Crested Gecko's tank. And I'll leave the links for all the lights and everything that I use in the description below. And then there are also lights that you can buy that are specifically for growing plants. And usually they'll come in the form of blue and red lights. I have one of these along with a LED light on my Crocodile Skinks tank. Just make sure that any light at all, especially these, you are turning off at nighttime. Again, biodude.com, Arcadia, joshesfrogs.com, all those sell lights that are made for growing plants, that are made for biofacious setups. So, they have you covered there too. The cleanup crew. This is the most important part of the whole bioactive setup because it is the part that's going to clean up your tank and keep that cycle moving. Cleanup crew can be a lot of different things depending on what kind of bioactive setup you are setting up, whether it be a tropical or an arid setup. So basically the point of a cleanup crew is to break down animal waste, they break down mold, they break down decaying leaves, which is what that leaf litter is for, and any leaves that fall off of your plants, they're going to eat all that up and break it down and turn it into fertilizer for your plants. So that is where the cleanup and cleanup crew come from is because they are cleaning up your animal's wastes. A cleanup crew can be things like springtails and isopods, earthworms, mealworms, darkling beetles, anything like that that's going to clean up your tank. I know some people even will use doobie roaches for this. With isopods and springtails and earthworms, all of those kinds of things are going to be used in a more tropical setup. They require moisture and wetness, while things like mealworms and darkling beetles are going to be best in a arid environment. But the cool thing about isopods is you can get very creative with your isopods. Isopods come in so many different colors. There are some beautiful ones. There's oranges, they come in zebra stripe, there's powder blue, they come in so many different colors and that's just another way that you can kind of spice up your tank a little bit if you wanted to. 
So now that we've talked about setting up a bioactive tank and all the great things about it, let's talk about some of the cons because there are always cons with everything that you do. The first one is that setup can be very expensive, especially if this is the first time that you are ever setting up a bioactive tank and you're having to buy all these materials for the first time. It's going to be expensive to start it up. You're going to need to buy the drainage layer and the weed block or whatever you use, the soils, the moss, the leaves, the plants, cork bark if you're going to use it. The only thing that you're going to be able to use that you already have is the tank and branches and that's if you go and find them. If you buy branches online or from pet stores they get very expensive very fast. I have a large piece of grape wood that I got for Zaz from Repticon a long time ago and it was a pretty big piece of wood but I think I ended up spending 20 something dollars for it if not 30 something dollars and that's a lot for a piece of wood. So if you're buying that new that's going to be expensive. Springtails, the first culture of springtails that you get is going to be expensive. Isopods are pretty expensive. Everything Thing that you get is going to be expensive the first time. Now all of these things are going to be materials that you can span across multiple tanks. So if you look at that way it is going to be cheaper but having to buy all of this stuff for one tank is definitely going to be expensive. Next one is gnats. I never had this problem until this summer. A lot of people had been complaining about gnats in bioactive tanks and I had no idea until this summer. This is the first time this has ever happened. Topsoils and things like that all draw in gnats and mixes like cypress mulch, cocoa fiber, orchid bark, anything like that that is packaged sometimes brings in gnat eggs and once the temperatures are right it gets warm and moist in that environment those eggs hatch and then gnats happen and it gets super annoying super fast. Another huge con is that plants die. I am the worst at keeping plants. My whole first crested gecko setup died and I had to start over which was more cost. That is another added cost as well if your plants die because you have to replace them. And with a bioactive setup your future customization is pretty limited and what I mean by that is with basic setups you can change around hides and stuff like that whenever you feel like it and if that's something that you like to do it's going to be harder to do in a bioactive setup because for the most part once your bioactive setup is set up it's done until your tank needs to be cleaned out in a couple of months. So if you're one of those people that loves to just change around your tank all the time that is going to be very very difficult in a bioactive setup. But yeah, that's it guys. I covered everything that I could think about. If you have other questions or anything that I missed, leave it in the comments below. If you're not already, feel free to follow me on other socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put on a new video, which is every Sunday and Wednesday. This week's Instagram shout out goes to MegAnimalX for following me on Instagram, going through and liking a whole bunch of my stuff. You are the bee's knees. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. I did a video a little while back about I did a video a little while back about basic setups versus simplest. I did a I did a video a little while back about that one. I'll leave a little card there for you. So you're gonna put your moss and your leaf litter in there, and then after. So you're gonna put thing of right now, but I'll leave this. Hey bud. Hi. Hi. Look at you. Look at you. Hi. 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 Hi.